Astronomers who work with stars have one fundamental diagram and this is the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram because of Hertzsprung and Russell. Now this diagram shows the evolution of stars and thereby stars are also classified within this scheme here. Now the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram comes in various flavors because many of the parameters of stars, mass, um, temperature, radius and so on um, are related to each other and it's possible to to make this diagram differently here. For us it's just important to know the fundamentals of this plot here. So here on the axis, on the x-axis, there's the temperature increasing into, um, into this direction towards blue because other stars become more blue and on the y-axis there's the luminosity. Both are log scales. The luminosity is always normalized to um, one uh, to the to sun, so the sun is always at uh, at one. And uh, so this diagram here shows quite nicely a couple of the parameters. Um, it's it's from the ESO, and you see the different sizes of the stars and the different colors of the stars. Now the sun is as said here at a luminosity of one and at a temperature of about 6,000 degrees, doesn't really matter, it's Kelvin, Celsius about, doesn't make a big difference here. Now usually stars start down here in this field, something like that. And then the stars develop into this direction here. And this direction is called the main sequence. So if you would plot all the stars that were measured, they would, most of them would plot on the main sequence, that's why it's called main sequence. At some point then the stars will make a turn into this direction or maybe even earlier something like here and when they make this turn depends on the size or mass, initial mass. So higher mass go further up, lower mass are a little bit further down. So the ones that, the, the very heavy ones, they form the, the supergiants up here and then stars like our sun for example, they bend around here and then form giant, still a red giant at some point, and star, the sun, when the st sun will become a, um, a red giant star, it will be so big that Earth's orbit will be within the sun and then we have climate change. But it takes four and a half billion more years until we get there. And uh, importantly here are also the HGB stars, they are quite important as we think that quite some of the pre-solar grains might come from these here. Now after this stage, so what happens is that inside a star there's hydrogen burning and helium burning, oxygen depending on the size, so the sun will only have hydrogen burning for example, a little bit of helium burning maybe. Um, and at some point uh, the burning inside stops and uh, so there's no radiation anymore and the, the star collapses in a core collapse and then explodes in maybe some supernova or something like this and then becomes quite small and so it will go down here and become a white dwarf. Or that's what's happened, will be happening to, to Earth, or uh, not the Earth, but the Sun. Um, and if the star is more massive, it might become a neutron star, or if it's very massive, it might even become a black hole. So this is um, in general how the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram works. So these are the fundamentals, and this is basically all we need to know in cosmochemistry um, with regard to, to the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram.